Kavala, a city of about 50,000 people in the eastern Macedonia region of northern Greece. Once a thriving hub for the tobacco trade, Kavala today exists as a center of commerce and tourism. Why tourism though? Well, other than being built upon layers upon layers of history, like many places in Greece, Kavala is also a very picturesque city with a couple of very unique landmarks that are cool to see, one of which right there behind me, a Roman style aqueduct, which actually was not even built during the Roman times. It was actually built much more recently than that in the 16th century, which is kind of odd for this region because Roman style aqueducts were much more common in Western Europe, areas that were part of the Western part of the Roman Empire. Kavala is a city that is built amphitheatrically around the Gulf of Kavala, which leads out into the Northern Aegean Sea. So what do I mean by amphitheatrically built? Well, it's kind of built like an amphitheater. You can see right around there where it kind of begins in that direction and it just kind of goes around like this like an amphitheater and then down here you see the sea so it's kind of built around like an amphitheater and then out there of course you have the island of Thasso which is not that far from here and this is a close access point to the island of Thasso. Now all of these nice views of Kavala that I'm introducing you to are actually seen from the terrace of the Airbnb that I'm staying at and I'm gonna show you guys that really quickly before we head out to walk around the city because this place is really amazing and I'll leave a link below for anyone who's visiting Kavala who's interested in finding a cool place to stay. This is something I would highly recommend because check out this terrace right here. I mean this is a very big area that you'll have to yourself if you stay here, there's a swing, there's a table, some sunbeds, a barbecue, and you have some wraparound views that go from all the way back here, and then the upper part of the old neighborhood, and curling around to the other side where, of course, you have the rest of Gavala, and you have, you could even see the aqueducts very clearly from here. So when you come up to this Airbnb, you'll come up from this side here. This is where the stairs come up here and this is the kitchen area that comes up from the stairs here just like this but it's actually separate from where your room is which is going to be over here and of course this is primarily about the outside space so the room is kind of small but you know you're not going to be here to be sitting inside all the time a little bed here with big windows that you can enjoy the views of Kavala from. So, and then a little couch and a TV, a little desk for a little small workspace if you're like me and you work remotely and need somewhere to work while you're here. But that's the really cool Airbnb that I'm staying at here in Kavala. Of course, as someone who makes travel videos, the amazing views from this place are very fitting. But that is where we're starting out today. Let's go ahead and walk around the old part of Kavala. Kavala has a new town and an old town. The new town, of course, much of what you see from here on the other side of the aqueduct is the new town, but the old town is on what's called the Panagia Peninsula. If you look on a map, it's kind of like a little peninsula, and it's sort of like a mound. It's very hilly, narrow streets. Much of what we'll see today is around here on the old town, very close. Not gonna need to take any transportation anywhere because we're just gonna be walking around the old town and checking out the old town of Kavala here, since most of the historic sites and the sort of interesting things things to see in Kavala are in the old town on the Panagia Peninsula. All right, so let's go up to the top of the Panagia Peninsula where there is an old Acropolis where of course, other than having some really good views, since it is the highest point of the old town here, it also just looks really cool in the area around it. You'll get your leg workout going up this hill for sure. Hmm. Well, at least they put a sign to let you know that there's no exit this way. So let's try another way. Ah, here we go. This looks a little more promising.
All right, so we're in the castle. As you saw, admission is two euros and 50 cents. It's open till 4 p.m. in the winter, and later than that in the summer, you'll see on the sign, and you'll see on the information for this place. I'll leave a link below so you can check it, so that in case you're watching this video long after I post it, you could see the up-to-date information about it. But this is uh, a really cool thing to see here at the top of the Panagia Peninsula, which is the old town of Kavala. Watch your head. Oh, somebody left their coffee here. <laughs> All right, here's where you gotta hang on a little. Good thing we put these rails. Yes, watch your step here. <laughs> I was actually warned to watch my step up around here because as you can see, it's tedious, but look at this. Look at the view that you get from the top here. Wow, amazing. So when you come up to the top of the castle, you will be greeted with this amazing panoramic view of Kavala and of the island of Thasso, which is pretty close to here. And even if it's a less clear day than it is today, you'll probably be able to see it. One cool thing about if you come in the winter is you might get this place to yourself. And it's pretty small up here. So I'm actually, one of the reasons I'm really glad that I get this place to myself today is because it's kind of small here and uh, there's only one way up and down and it's very, very narrow. So it would be uh, a bit tricky to navigate that with people going up and down. Let's go ahead and head back down, check out the rest of the castle and then check out the rest of the old town of Kavala, the Panagia Peninsula. And I'm gonna stop filming as I walk down because as you can see, it is so narrow and tedious that uh, I really should just uh, hang on and go down carefully and not film while I'm doing that. Huh. So this apparently was an armory and food storage and also served as a prison. Well, there's all the cannonballs. It looks like a space that was definitely meant for storing. So this part apparently is much older than the tower that we were just on and even the storage area that we were just at after that, but this looks like it's closed. Yep, it is locked and closed, but it looks like it is the older part of this castle complex because it predates the Ottoman era, whereas other parts of it here were built soon after the Ottomans took over. And here it looks like maybe we can walk up along the wall. Let's go ahead and walk up along the wall. Huh. There we go. Obviously not as high up as the tower, but Still cool, nonetheless. 
And it looks like here on the other side, there's also some steps. And the steps that look like they were built into the castle rather than just put in after. And then here, a little area that, I guess maybe a little storage area, or maybe even a small prison, who knows? Not very big, but let's see. We can go up here, I assume, to this side of the walls here. Yep, here you go. And here is looking out the other way, towards the land side and the rest of the city. This is, from this wall here, what this side of the complex looks like. So, that looks like that's pretty much it. So we'll go back out that way to exit and then continue our walk around Old Kavala. And there is the Halil Bey Mosque at the center point of the old town here in Kavala. And of course, it is built on a structure that existed before the Ottoman times. Apparently the earliest part of this was from the late early Christian period. And then in the middle Byzantine period, more of a church was built on top of it. And then of course, fast forward to the Ottoman conquest, and then it was converted to a mosque, as was often the case during those times. So apparently it also had a minaret up until the 1950s. It doesn't explain on the plaque what happened to it, if it was intentionally taken down or if it fell down, but the mosque itself here is not open today, so we'll just have to see it from the outside. And also this little area right next to it, which of course shows the signs of the parts of this that predate the mosque itself and even the church that was converted into a mosque. You see down below this some evidence of what this was built on top of, and apparently there was also a grave site here. So one thing that'll quickly stand out to you in the old town of Kavala is how much Ottoman history there is here, which is not surprising considering its location between Thessaloniki and Istanbul, two of the most important cities of the Ottoman Empire. This part of Greece was under Ottoman rule and influence for a lot longer than many other parts of Greece. It's amazing that you can drive around these old streets. I actually kind of did myself when I came here because I did drive here and where I'm staying is in the old town here, but it's still pretty crazy that <laughs> you can drive in these little streets here. It definitely takes some skill to do it without scraping your car on something. <laughs> Are you going to accompany me? You gonna accompany me on my walk? around the old city yeah <laughs> well you look like you're fed well so I don't feel too bad that I don't have any cat food to give you or any cat treats <laughs> coming up from the back side here, but it looks like this might be it. Let's see on the front what it looks like. It is just after two o'clock and it closes at two o'clock. All right, so we've arrived a little too late to visit the museum of the house of Mehmet Ali. So keep that in mind on the days that it is open. As of now, the time I'm making this video, it closes at 2 p.m. So make sure you get here before 2 p.m. It is something cool to see because it's probably, I would imagine, the most well-preserved example of 18th century Ottoman architecture here in Kavala. And here is the statue of Mehmet Ali in front of his house, right there, where he grew up. Of course, obviously, given who he was, um, it is a wealthy house. His house is an example of how people who were quite well off at the time would have lived. Now we've pretty much seen much of what there is to see in the old town, so let's walk down and maybe get into the more modern side of Kavala a little bit. One other thing that is worth seeing if you visit the old town of Kavala is the Imaret. This was a complex 
that dates back to the age of Mehmet Ali, and apparently it was built as a gift by him to his city of Kavala. So it, the outside of it is behind me. We can't go inside because the time to visit is actually past. It also closes at 2. It's only open from 10 to 2, and it is available for guided tours, so I probably would not have been able to film in there anyway, but this is the outside of the Emirate. So here's a little bit of information about the old city wall, which this is a piece of that's still standing. Of course, Kavala has been around since a lot longer than the time that it is called Kavala. So a piece of that very old history from the earliest times of Kavala is in that, that piece of the wall that's there behind me. <laughs> Don't know if you guys could see that, but they were all giving me thumbs ups in that van. So see how friendly people are here? There it is, the old aqueducts behind me, or kamaris as they're called in Greek. Even though they look like ancient Roman aqueducts, they actually were built in the 16th century, much more recently, during the Ottoman times. Even though, yes, of course, it does have the ancient Roman aqueduct style. It's right here in the middle of the city, kind of between the sea and the new town and the old town, and at a big major crossroads, as you can see behind me, lots of traffic around here, and you can just pass right under it, either on foot or by car. Definitely very hard to miss. But now that we've seen all that, let's go and eat because I'm getting hungry. Apparently, one of the best places to eat in Kavala is a taverna called Araliki. So let's go ahead and have a nice lunch at Araliki. It's a local craft beer that was recommended to me, so let's go ahead and try it as we wait for our food. Mm. Not bad. Definitely has a good, mildly sweet flavor. So uh, if you're into trying local beers and you're visiting Kavala, might be worth trying a bottle of Marmita. If you like red ales, you'll probably like it. And while we wait for our main course, we have our roca salad. Obviously that's not unique to Kavala. You can find a good roca salad pretty much anywhere in Greece. A lot of places I've been to have had this salad. It's one of my favorites. And some bread. So go ahead and enjoy that while we wait for our main course. All right, here is our kondosuvli. This was recommended to me by the restaurant as their best dish here, the pork kondosuvli. So let's go ahead and dig in. It sure, look, it sure looks and smells delicious. <laughs> Usually it's cats that are standing near you, staring at you while you eat, hoping you give them some scraps. But here, this one random seagull will also join in that activity. And of course, the complimentary sweet at the end of the meal. I think the good reviews of this restaurant are definitely justified. And apparently, this guy here thinks so too. This one random seagull has not left my side the entire time that I have been sitting here. So that was our delicious meal at Arliki, which is actually right across from the Imaret. So it's close to one of the most well-known landmarks here in the old town of Kavala. And I asked the waiter on the way out what Arliki meant, because I didn't know what that word meant. I, I never heard that word in Greek before. And he said it basically means to chill or to relax. So I guess you could say the name is fitting because it was a chill and relaxed kind of place to go and eat and enjoy a meal. Walking along the port here with the old city of Kavala behind me, I think I'll go ahead and wrap things up here for this video. I've spent one full day here in Kavala, which I think is a long enough time for you to see what there is to see in the city itself. Now, of course, there's some places just outside of Kavala that are worth seeing as well. So if you spend an extra day or two in Kavala, definitely go and see those places. But one day should be enough 
in Kabbalah itself. And if it's a nice sunny day like it was for me today, then you'll get to enjoy the nice views of this very nice looking city in the East Macedonia region of Northern Greece. We'll leave it off at that. Thank you, those of you who have watched this video. Extra thank you to those of you who have subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss what's coming up next on Global Nico. So until then, take care and travel better.